Here's a circle, and let's draw a few chords inside of it. Which two of these chords are parallel? Right, these two chords are parallel. If you extend them into lines, they run in the same direction and never intersect. OK, let's draw points at the ends of these chords. Now these chords divide up the circle into four arcs. This one on top, this one on the right, this one on the bottom, and this one on the left. Which two of these arcs appear to have the same measure? Exactly, it looks like these two arcs have the same measure. Let's see if we can prove that this is true. First, let's extend these chords into lines again. And let's also draw a transversal that crosses the parallel lines, passing through this point here and this point over here. Now suppose I tell you that this angle here measures 25 degrees. Notice this is an inscribed angle for this arc on the right. So then what's the measure of the arc? In other words, what's the measure of this arc's central angle? And to review how arcs and their inscribed angles are related, click down here. Excellent! For a given arc, the central angle is always double the inscribed angle. So if this inscribed angle measures 25 degrees, then the central angle measures 50 degrees. In other words, this arc measures 50 degrees. Next, take a look at this angle up here. Remember, these two lines are parallel, so these two angles are alternate interior angles. So then what's the measure of this angle? Right, so this angle also measures 25 degrees. And this 25 degree angle is an inscribed angle for this arc on the left. So what's the measure of this arc? Exactly, the measure of this arc is twice the measure of this inscribed angle, so it's 50 degrees. So both of these arcs have the same measure, and this is true in general. If the measure of this angle is x, then this angle must also have measure x, because they're alternate interior angles. And that means both arcs measure 2x. So we've proven that arcs between parallel chords are always congruent, meaning they always have the same measure. Let's try applying this fact to a sample question. Here's a diameter, and let's draw in another parallel chord, and let's label these points A, B, C, and D. So AD is a diameter of the circle, and BC is parallel to AD. Now suppose the measure of arc BC is 100 degrees. Can you find the measures of the other three arcs? This is a tricky question, so if you get stuck, click down here. Excellent work! Arc AD is half the circle, so it measures 180 degrees. So if arc BC measures 100 degrees, and arc AD measures 180 degrees, and all the arcs together add up to 360 degrees, that leaves 80 degrees for arcs AB and CD. And according to this rule, those 80 degrees should be split evenly between these two arcs because they're congruent. So the measure of arc AB is 40 degrees, and the measure of arc CD is also 40 degrees. That was a challenging question, so nicely done. Here we'll discover a property of intersecting chords in circles. So here's a circle, and let's draw in two chords, and here's where they intersect. Let's look at the four line segments created by this intersection. Suppose this one has length 4, this has length 6, and this has length 8. There's a special rule for intersecting chords in circles that you can use to find the length of this remaining segment. To discover this rule, click over here. And if you definitely already know it, then go ahead and solve for this length. Great, let's get started. Don't worry about these specific lengths for now. First, let's draw in two more line segments. And notice that we have two triangles, one up here and the other down here. We'll be exploring how these two triangles are related. Next, let's look at all the angles in these triangles. Of the six angles here, which two represent a pair of vertical angles? Exactly, here's the pair of vertical angles on opposite sides of intersecting lines. And remember that vertical angles are always congruent to each other. Next, take a look at this circular arc, and suppose it has measure x. 
Now here's an inscribed angle for this arc. So in terms of x, what's the measure of this inscribed angle? If you're not sure, click over here to review how inscribed angles are related to their arcs. Precisely, inscribed angles measure half as much as their arcs, so this angle has measure x over 2. Now if you look up here, we have another inscribed angle for this same arc. So what's the measure of this inscribed angle? Right, this angle also has measure x over 2. So we might not know the exact value of x, but we can definitely say that these two angles have the same measure, so they're congruent to each other. Next, take a look at this arc over here. It's inscribed by this angle down here, and also by this angle up here. So these two angles are also congruent to each other. So if you look at these two triangles again, you've just proven that they have three matching pairs of angles. So then what word describes how these two triangles are related? Precisely, so these two triangles are similar, and that means their sides are proportional. So let's call the length of this green segment y. Then the ratio of these two corresponding sides, 4 and 8, must equal the ratio of these two corresponding sides, 6 and y. See if you can solve this equation for y. And if you want to review how to get equations like this from similar triangles, then click down here instead. Nicely done. So y equals 12, meaning this segment must have a length of 12. Again, that's because you proved that these two triangles are similar. In general, you can always construct two similar triangles from intersecting chords. Next, let's rearrange this equation. We can multiply both sides by 8, and then multiply both sides by 12. So now this equation says that when you have intersecting chords, if you multiply the two segments of one chord, they equal the product of the segments from the other chord. And this is true for every pair of intersecting chords. Next, take a look at these two chords. Suppose these segments have lengths of A, B, C, and D then which two of these expressions over here must be equal? Now with this interactive, you can pick any two chords you want by dragging these four points around the circle. Check for yourself whether the products of the segments from each chord are truly equal to each other. Then, when you're ready, try out this question. Suppose two chords intersect so that all four line segments have the same length. Then what must each of these chords be? If you're not sure, feel free to ask for a hint. Okay, last question. Here's another pair of intersecting chords, and suppose this segment has length 8, this segment has length 2, and suppose these two segments have the same length x. Use what you know about intersecting chords to solve for x.